So some of the tools that I like to use on pastel mat. Kneadable eraser. This is my number one tool. This little Faber-Castell kneadable eraser looks a little bit like a penguin at the minute. Um, I tend to use this predominantly when I'm using white pastel mat. Um, so if I bring this piece in here, this I will use for highlights, for a little bit of blending, taking out little bits of texture. Um, the wolf that I just, uh, I've just done, th this tool has been absolutely fantastic for creating uh, you know the different texture in the fur and everything so this is my number one tool for using on pastel mat so scotch magic tape brilliant on all kinds of surfaces always test it first because it can take the surface off but on pastel mat is wonderful for removing marks so if you've got um an outline that you want to get rid of or there's like a little pencil mark that you want to get rid of something like that you can you can get rid of those kind of marks or you can create uh, highlights in places so you can you can take tear a piece off um, this is what I did with the wolf this is how I created the fur down here um, put a little bit of the tape on and then you just sort of take take the, the a bit of the surface off and you're left with that little bit of uh, highlight there. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant little tool is the Scotch Magic Tape. The cotton buds. Cotton buds are really, really useful for blending, particularly backgrounds, uh, getting things a little bit softer, getting rid of some pencil lines. Absolutely awesome for using on, on pastel mat. So cotton buds, definitely a great tool. The slice tool. Now, I don't use this as much on pastel mat, but it can be really useful just for getting some sharp details in. Um, I didn't use it an awful, I didn't use it at all in here, actually, um, but I have used it on pastel mat pieces before and it can be really, really useful. Just so make sure you've got a nice sharp blade. Use the, the bigger blade. So the, the um, this is the manual pen cutter that I've got here. And I, this has got the chisel shaped blade, so I find this one easier. And it's just a case of sort of coming in and, and just sort of scraping little bits, being very, very gentle. Again, bringing in a little bit of texture. So another another good tool to use. Don't overdo it. Don't let your slice tool take the place of good pencil work. Pencil work comes first. The slice tool is there just to enhance it if you need it. And then the other thing that I use as well is a little dry brush. I find this really useful. Got to be quite careful because it does brush the pigment off. But I use it for just sort of dabbing and just, you know, I'll just kind of kind of come in and just dab in places just to soften slightly. Um, be careful of sort of brushing a lot because it will move the pigment and it will take the pigment off the paper. But for just tiny areas where you want to just soften slightly, it's really, really good to, just to use a little... Um, this one's a, um, a filbert zero, uh, not that it matters, just a nice little soft brush. And that that's really helps for things like edges, you know, just to get nice soft edges. You've got to be very, very gentle, but it's um, it's a really good little tool. One of the things I don't recommend on pastel mat, and this is just my personal opinion, is I don't recommend indenting. I find that the pastel mat surface becomes disturbed a little bit when you use. I've just got the little indenting tool here. Um, and I just find it, it disturbs the surface a little bit and you, you can end up with some kind of, I don't know, the lines aren't clean. Uh, and I just, I just prefer not to indent on pastel mat. It's um, a personal preference. Some people like it. I, personally, I don't. Um, I think it ends up looking a little bit sharp and a little bit uh, a little bit scrappy. Um, so I don't indent on pastel mat. Some people like it. I don't. Mm -hmm.